I'm Robert Williams from MetalRules.com and joining me today in Austin, Texas is Saxon frontman Biff Byford. How are you doing today? Oh, cheers. I'm doing good. Doing good today. Good to see you. So Saxon's currently touring the U.S. for the second time this year alongside co-headliners Motorhead in a building that harkens back to the classic Bombers and Eagles tour from 92. Saxon and Motorhead had such a history together. Can you remember when you and Lemmy first met? Yeah, we met in uh, 1979. It was our first... Uh, it's our first support tour, just before Wheels of Steel came out. So yeah, that's 79. Wow. So the original, uh, the original Motorhead. Have you and Lumi ever had a chance to jam together on or off stage? Yeah, we've been, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've done, uh, he came on and did 747 a couple of times. I've done uh, Killed by Death three or four times with him. And obviously he sang on uh, one of our songs on the um, Inner Sanctum album. Oh, badass. Got to Rock Stay Alive. You not seen the video? I know I've seen the video. Got there. to rock to stay alive. Let me sing on it. And Angry Anderson. Angry Anderson from Rose Tattoo. Right? That's right. Yeah. So uh, tell me about how this current tour has been going with Motorhead. Uh, so good, far. good, good. Yeah. Uh, you know they got a, they got a few days off for some men's health, so we usually throw in a few headline shows here and there. So yeah, it's going great actually. I mean, I think we got maybe four shows, four or five shows left, and then we go off uh, headlining with our Saint Sport. Yeah, you're doing the pre-show for Prog Power out there, right? That's right. Yeah, we are. What a way yeah. to kick off the, the yeah, be good. Kick off the kick off the uh, the headlining section. Yeah. So your new album, Battering Ram, is out October 16th in the U.S. courtesy of UDR Music, and has already been described as a more focused, more metal-sounding album. In your opinion, Biff, what can metal fans expect from Battering Ram? Uh, to be battered. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's. Uh, a bit, you know, I, we made the album, so we're close to it. So it's hard for us. We love the album. You know, it, it's uh, it's like a, a clash between the, you know, it's a clash between the retro Saxon and the modern Saxon, and it's a, it's massive. It's a massive sound, you know. Andy Sneem's done a great job for us. But Andy loves the '80s bands as well, so he's a great producer to get the both, best of both things going. You know. Yeah. You know, we're not trying to recreate the Wheels of Steel album. Uh, we're trying to. You know, move on a bit, but still have the essence of Saxon there. So, yeah. and he worked with you guys on Sacrifice. He did. Well. He he, is, he engineered Sacrifice. He he mixed it. So natural. And I wanted to spend a bit more time on my vocals rather than producing. So you know, I knew everything would be safe with Andy. So yeah. very cool. So I understand you and Nibs wrote the majority of the new album, Battering Ram. Yeah, the original original riffs, yeah, with me and Nibs uh, worked a lot together. Just Nigel was, uh, you know, ill and, uh, you know, selling his house. And it just worked out that me and Nibs got together and did some work. No, no, there's no hidden meanings in that. It's just how it worked out, you know. And Nibs got a few ideas he was working on and I got a few titles and we just got together. Is that a little different than the songwriting process normally works in Saxon? Uh, well, I'm usually I'm usually working with one guy or the other, you know, because okay. I'm the only singer in the band. Yeah. And I write all the lyrics, and I'm usually working with you know one of the guitarists or nibs. Uh, sometimes I work with with uh, Nigel because he plays keyboards a lot. So yeah, I'm usually working one on one. Initially, when we first start, uh, sometimes we'll all be in a room jamming. You know, there's no set rules. No set rules. You know, we don't have a set rule. You know, like I think Halloween, they, everybody writes three songs. Yeah. You know, and that's the way they do it. But for us to do it and keep it fresh and you know alive, I'm not saying Halloween aren't like that, but for us, it keeps us fresh and alive to uh, you know to write things fairly quickly in a, in a sort of you know in a focused way. If you know what I mean. So a video was filmed for the album's title track, Battering Ram, the song which has been said to have been inspired by rabid metal fans raging to the front of the barricades at live shows. <laughs> In your experience, and you've been all around the world, Biff, 
where are metal fans the most dedicated, the most enthusiastic? Where do they go the craziest for metal? I think it's probably got to be um, you know, the Latin countries. I think probably South America and sort of Central America. And as you get further nearer to, to Mexico, I think, you know, American fans also get a bit crazier. Must be the Latin blood in them. Not to say that, you know, fans in, in uh, I mean, Texas, you know, is a great, great audience for, for metal as well. So I just think uh, they're not better fans, they're just a bit crazier, you know, a little bit crazier for the music. I think because maybe you don't get, they don't get many bands down there, perhaps, I don't know. Or maybe, you know, they love the 80s stuff when it's all in there. Don't know why. But if you ask any band, any band, they all say that, you know, like Brazil or Mexico are crazy, crazy audiences. Yeah. Some of the prettiest girls over there, too. Definitely. It all goes together, you know. Yeah. Crazy audience, crazy girls. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the songs off the new album. There's a song off Battering Ram called The Devil's Footprint. Yeah. that lyrically deals with old mythic folklore of seeing the tracks of the devil and the fresh fallen snow. Where are those yeah, tracks? For 80 lead? miles, actually. It, the track went for 80 miles. 80 miles. So it must have been something fairly fit. Yeah. They lead to a Saxon concert? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's a good legend and it's a good myth. And um, if you if people want to Google it, they just put in Devil's Footprints and it'll come up. And you have a track like Queen of Hearts inspired by Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. Well, loosely, it, it's a bit of a surreal song. It, actually, I wanted it to sound more like God of the Crimson King. Okay. You know, because uh, we covered that song on one of our albums. And I, I love that style of prog, you know, that style of lyric that sort of, you know, takes you somewhere, but actually you don't know where it's taking you. Um, so, yeah, it, it's influenced by that sort of, you know, uh, King Crimson style. Rock, really. Uh, it's obviously not like them, but I wanted to get that sort of similar feel okay. lyrically to it. And then it, it sort of goes into um, somewhere else. But you know, I like that song. It, it's a good listening song, that song. Good listening song. I can't wait to listen to it. Have you not heard it? I, I haven't heard the new album yet. Yeah. No, some, some people I'm doing interviews with in America already heard it. They but it must have been either yesterday or today they heard it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's that, that new here. Maybe I'll get yeah. a download. Maybe somewhere. you'll get one, yeah. So I read somewhere that the song Destroyer is about a Marvel Comics character, and I'm familiar with guys like Spider-Man, Thor, Incredible Hulk. Who is this character that's... Well, the, the, the uh, Destroyer is, is, uh, is uh, you know, the Iron Man, not Iron Man, sorry, Thor. You know his brother, Loki? Yeah. Well, the, the Loki uh, developed, or, you know, developed this... Um, a destroyer that would destroy the uh, came to destroy the earth basically to fight against Thor. Okay. Because Thor's the good guy, Loki's the bad god, isn't it? Thor's the good god, Loki's the bad god. And um, yeah, so I, I wanted. I mean, from the comics really that I, that I saw a destroyer. I mean, I think it was in the first Thor film, Destroyer. I don't think there was a big thing came out with like, you know, I don't even remember the first Thor film. You ever see it? Yeah. There's a big robot in that that comes down from Loki. Oh, come on. Fantastic phone, huh? We have a lot of songs about putting the pedal to the metal. You guys got Wheels of Steel, Motorcycle yeah, yeah, Man, yeah. Warriors of the Road, and now yeah. Hard and Fast. Yeah. Are you the speed demon in the sex? Yeah. What's your dream? Yeah, I've here? been done many times by the police for speeding. Yeah. Yeah. I like. I like. I like. If you've got a machine that will go fast, then go fast safely if you can. German is the place. Go as fast as you want in Germany. On certain stretches of the road. And what, what would you say is your dream car? Dream car? Yeah. Uh, so probably a Ferrari, I would say. Uh, I used to have a I used to have a really nice uh, I used to have a really nice Trans Am in the day, you know, that was a nice car for well. But I had 911 as well. 911 was nice. So you know, anything that's fast for me. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I'm really into motorcycles as well. So hard and fast. If you listen to it, you see you'll see one course is riding and one course is driving. So it covers both really. You Harley guy? I've had Harleys. Yeah, I've had Harleys. I've had Ducatis. I've had Triumphs. I've had lots of bikes. You know, I haven't got one at the moment. So you know, there's no point having one, is there? You know, so 
because you're always on the road. I'm right? always on the road, yeah. So let's talk about Kingdom of the Cross. It's not a typical Saxon song. It's not a typical anybody's song, really. Based on the First World War, it is. and Nigel composed it on a synthesizer, and you had your friend... Well, I, I wrote the lyrics, and I wrote a poem, uh -huh. put it online for the, for the centenary you know, of the First World War finishing this year. Yeah. So I think I put it on about five months ago. That was it. And then Nigel, I found this piece that Nigel sent me about two years ago of him playing synth. And I thought, oh, maybe I could, um, you know, maybe I could put the poem to that. It's a wacky idea. I don't think anybody else really understood what I wanted to do. And uh, Doug, Doug had a really nice arpeggio part, which I put in for the chorus. So, um, yeah, and I just got my friend Dave, Dave Power from Van Hell, who's a, a trained actor anyway, so he can do all the voices, you know, uh, to, do the, to do the talking on it for me. I mean, I could have done it, but I thought it was nicer for somebody else to do it, you know, so I think it worked quite well. It's, it's certainly um, not predictable. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it's something that makes you think. You know, but it's a poem that I've put to Nigel's music, basically. Very cool. Looking forward to checking that out. Mm. So, speaking of Nigel, you know, he shortly, uh, early, earlier this year, he recovered from a brain aneurysm. And mm. He's already gone and formed a side project with Kurt Vanderhoof of Metal Church. Is, is Nigel firing at 110% again, you'd say? Well, yeah, he must be. If he, if he, you know, he's going to do this side project thing. And, uh, yeah. Where did you hear about that, actually? About uh, the Nigel Stop God, yeah. Uh, I believe it was Brave Words. Oh, okay, cool. I don't know about it, I just wondered how it had got out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, there, there's been a bit of it in the press. Right. But yeah, it sounds like an interesting project. Yeah, um, sounds good. So, w when he was out in, in February, you guys did five shows with Udo's son Sven on drums. Tell yeah, Sven. Well, well, Sven was Nigel's drum tech on that tour, so it's quite easy for him to drop in do the drums he's a great drummer Sven. so you know it was it was good and we, we go back a long way with Udo as well and except you know we played together in the day and we've, we know the, we know the family really so we used to see Sven come to the gigs as a little boy you know so yeah it's great so you and Udo still keep in touch yeah we you know I see Udo a lot we, we just played a show with them in um, not more than three weeks ago in Germany Lorelei yeah so Saxon has always shared a special bond with Texas metal bands, San Antonio in particular. There's just been a tribute concert last weekend that Moxie headlined for the late KISS FM DJ, the Godfather Joe Anthony. And it reminded me of the first time I saw you guys in San Antonio, Moxie was opening up for you. Uh, tell me about how you always remember uh, Godfather Joe Anthony and the impact he had on your fans in San Antonio. Well, he, he picked up on all the 80s band very quickly, you know, Maiden. Saxon, a few others as well, you know, Tag of the Pantang, uh, Angel Witch, all those early bands. Um, the thing is, those made them were very pr prolific in, in the 80s. You know, they had uh, Killers and then they came straight back with the, the, with the album with uh, Bruce, you know. So um, we had Wheels of Steel song on the wall. So I think he, he, he dropped on the, the, the English uh, New Wave British Heavy Metal thing quite quickly, Joe and um, play, play the shit out of it on the radio and um, against the odds actually you know before anybody was playing on radio I mean actually that was the thing in the 80s people didn't play on the radio you know so we used to us and Maiden used to make quite a big thing of it that you know we weren't being played on radio so you know come see us anywhere so um, I think Joe was 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 uh, you know was dedicated to rock fan and he just loved um, he just loved that British classic rock, you know, loved it. And I think he did a great job for us, all, all across Texas actually, not just in San Antonio, I think his base was San Antonio. But you know, we'd go in town, we'd do an interview, we'd go out for dinner with him, you know, in the middle of the night, you know, it's great, great time. Very cool, thanks so much for sharing that story with us. Well, Bip, I know you're a really busy guy, I'm gonna let you get back to it. Uh, any last words for metal fans watching at home? Keep the faith. Remember, the battering ram cometh.